Good evening. This is CTV News for this Tuesday, August 27th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Sonia Shervaswa. Thank you for joining us this evening. A ruling last year by the Maryland Court of Appeals has opened the door for hundreds of inmates who were convicted before 1980 to get new trials. In Unger versus the state of Maryland, the court recognized that the instructions given to jurors produced unfair and flawed trials. Today, Three Unger ruling cases went before a judge in Upper Marlboro. Our Rochelle Metzger is there with more. After spending decades behind bars, two Maryland inmates are walking out of the Prince George's County Courthouse tonight, free men. And it's all because of a Maryland Court of Appeals ruling that judges instructions to juries in cases up to 1980 violated defendants rights to a fair trial. And now prosecutors are retroactively trying to correct those cases. Family members who came to the hearings today say they're just glad to have their loved ones back home. 46-year-old Michelle Melson was just five years old when her father, Ernest DuBose, was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison in 1973. I just lost my mom this past May, so I'm very happy that my father is home. I missed him. Today, Ernest DuBose is a free man, thanks to an agreement with the state's attorney's office that vacates his old sentence and imposes a new one. Life suspending all but 41 years, two months, and seven days. Time served. I'm just glad that this day finally came, and I'm happy to spend some quality time with him. Sterling Smith, a family friend, says DuBose has paid his dues. I feel that his heart has changed. But he knows that 75 transition back into society won't be easy. You know, it's going to be a process for him because everything can change. Melson, Smith, and DuBose have Merle Unger Jr. to thank. What the Unger ruling means is that these cases uh, prior to 1980, where this uh, instruction was given, which said that criminal, that the uh, law was merely advisory for juries to consider, was, was an, an error. State's attorney Angela also Brooks says these hearings are about retroactively correcting these cases. Most of the defendants in these cases have served a good amount of time. We're seeing probably on average 35 years or so. Um, so it's the case that we no longer believe that they pose a threat to our community. 66-year-old Francis Jones was convicted of armed robbery back in 1978 and was serving a life sentence. Today, he was credited 20 years for time served and left the courthouse a free man. The state's attorney's office tells us their investigators tried to track down victims' families but were unable to reach them, so they were not in the courtroom today. In total, there are 19 such cases in Prince George's County. 11 defendants have already filed motions for hearings. In Maryland, total 299 inmates could see new trials because of the Unger ruling. In Upper Marlboro, Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. A third inmate, Ralph Wilkins, also appeared in court today. Wilkins was convicted of murder in 1971, served 11 years, and was then paroled. He eventually violated his parole, but before he could be arrested, he fled the state. Wilkins was finally captured in 2001. Today, the judge granted him a new trial. Also, Brooks says she would like to reach a plea agreement with Wilkins, but her office is prepared to go to trial if necessary. Well, we are just hours away from the much-anticipated 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. Tens of thousands of people are expected to head to the district for the historic event, which will be capped off with a speech by President Barack Obama. Denise Douglas is joining us now with all the details. That's right. Well, tomorrow is the big day because August 28th is the actual day on which the March on Washington took place 50 years ago. As you know, people have been attending events on the Mall in D.C. as well as other places over the weekend marking the actual anniversary. On that infamous day back in 1963, crowds marched to the Lincoln Memorial where Martin Luther King Jr. delivered the I Have a Dream speech calling for equality and jobs. Tomorrow, people will also march to the memorial. President Obama will deliver the remarks from the same spot that King did, which will once again make the day historic and emotional for many. Here's what some people we spoke to at one of the weekend events had to say about King's dream today.
I do believe that we have come a long way, but like many others, I believe that we still have a long way to go, and that's why we're here today, to continue to stand, not only to commemorate what happened 50 years ago, but to continue the fight for jobs, for justice, for freedom, for peace, because those things are still extremely important in our day today. We can look at what's going on in the news. We can look at what's happening in our school systems. We can look at what's happening in many of our communities, and we realize that, yes, there has been progress, but there's still work to be done. So I think it's a, dr a dream that continues to evolve. Um, I don't think it's ever sort of a dream that we completely can say that we've finally been realized, but I think it's something that we're continue to move forward and try for every day. The president is expected to speak at 3 o'clock, which is the same time that Martin Luther King Jr. gave his address. A host of other speakers, including the for former presidents, at least two of them, will also make remarks tomorrow. Now, if you plan to join the marchers, they will start at 8 o'clock in the morning at 600 New Jersey Avenue Northwest. And I'm assuming public transportation is the best way to Abs get down there. Absolutely. Lots of people are going down, and there will also be road closures. So, for example, if you're heading to the march, Metro folks suggest that you take Union State or Judiciary Square, and if you're going straight to the mall, Foggy Bottom, Farragut West, Farragut North, and the Archives would be one of the stations that uh, you should get off at. No, don't drive it, though. Yeah, no. and they're also telling people to buy those cards early so you're not waiting in those long lines. There you go. Mm -hmm. Lots right. of good tips. Thank right. you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Well, could the Summer Olympics be coming to the nation's capital in 2024? That's the hopes of local nonprofit DC 2024, which has submitted a bid to host the Games. Matt Knightsey of the Prince George's Conference and Visitors Bureau says the event would be a big boost to the local economy. We've got tremendous infrastructure here. We've got a lot of existing facilities, so you wouldn't have to necessarily build a whole lot of new facilities. So that gives us a leg up. But in the interim, you have a chance to secure other events. So the U.S. Olympic Committee might be able to direct some of their national governing boards, USA Swimming, USA Gymnastics, USA Wrestling, to bring their events to this area and showcase our venues and facilities to the international audience so that they see we are capable of hosting big events like this. And this is not the first time the D.C. area has bidded on those Olympics. A joint effort by Washington and Baltimore to host the 2012 Olympics failed in 2002. Why well, Prince George's volunteer firefighter is sentenced to three years for robbing his ex-girlfriend in Northeast D.C. According to published reports, 23-year-old Jason Lassiter was sentenced by a D.C. Superior Court judge for the armed robbery, which took place in the district this past March. Authorities say Lassiter and several accomplices were armed with guns and wearing masks when they robbed his ex-girlfriend and another man of their cell phones. 